Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. January is National Mentoring Month, and at its most basic level, mentoring helps because it guarantees a young person that there is someone who cares about them. Mentors provide their mentees with an experienced friend who is there to help in many different situations. And my next guest is Diane De La Santos, who is the Executive Director of City on a Hill. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, Andrea. And thank you so much for being here. If you would, uh, let's start off finding out more about City on a Hill and what it is you do on a daily basis. All right, City on a Hill is a community center uh, located in a, a formerly abandoned hospital building. So we're a faith-based nonprofit organization. We're trying to be a catalyst for change in Central City neighborhoods by working with individual children and youth and their families and to make a difference uh, in the city of Milwaukee, to see transformation occur in the lives of young people. Mm -hmm. And you did mention that you're in uh, a building that used to be a hospital. So yes. that building on Kilbourne Avenue uh, has a rich history behind it. It does indeed. It was created as a hospital in the 1800s wow. and uh, for many decades really served the poor in some of the same ways we do today. Uh, then became a prominent hospital and then contracted again and became smaller and the services were relocated elsewhere uh, as hospitals changed in, in the Milwaukee area and so it sat vacant for a few years mm -hmm. um, before it was uh, transferred to City on a Hill and we have spent the last uh, 15 years almost uh, developing the campus and developing lives of people who come there and so uh, today we have a, a large array of programs for youth and families we have a free health clinic and we've developed with some partners 150 units of affordable housing on the campus oh wow so we'll talk about a few of those things in detail so sure. uh, let's start off uh, finding out more about you because you have in fact been with City on a Hill since 2013 and uh, you're an ordained minister and you spend a lot of time speaking across the state and working for social justice so would you agree that you've landed in the right place? <laughs> I believe that I have a calling to this. <laughs> I was uh, a healthcare executive for 20 years mm -hmm. um, before I sensed a calling to do something different with my life uh, in 2003 actually and so uh, I've, I've been there now for quite a number of years I actually moved into the abandoned hospital kind of early in its history um, and really that came out of my sense uh, that I just needed to be closer to the issues that we were dealing with. I heard from a black pastor in Denver mm -hmm. one time that you cannot solve a problem you don't understand <laughs> and you can't understand from a distance. Okay. And so I, even though Greenfield, where I was living in a condo, was only 10, 15 minutes away, it was a world away mm -hmm. from the issues at 23rd and Kilbourne. So I moved into the neighborhood, into the, the old hospital, and uh, began to see things in a new light. Wow. And so I should correct, you've been with City on a Hill since 2003. Yes. Okay, yes. so we don't want to take any years away from you, that's for sure. <laughs> you so. can, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I am intrigued by the fact that you moved into the facility in uh -huh. order to get a better understanding. So what are some of the issues that uh, uh, you became aware of in doing that? I think the thing that I learned the most about is just the impact of generational poverty. Mm -hmm. That poverty is not only and perhaps not even primarily uh, sometimes an economic issue at its core. It's, it involves broken relationships and all kinds of um, childhood pain uh, and other things that contribute to a person's difficulty in maintaining um, a, a life that is well resourced mm -hmm. and uh, well grounded. And so those are some of the things I learned and just, just the impact of a neighborhood where there are not all the resources that families and children need in order to have the kind of life that you or I would want for our families. Mm -hmm. And let's discuss some of those many programs and services starting sure. off with your youth mentoring program since uh, of course that's what we're focusing on this morning. There are a number of things that you do to help young people uh, become uh, better adults, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. And we learned after a couple of years that some of the more um, traditional or, um, you know, well-documented kinds of mentoring programs were not working so well for the children and youth we served mm -hmm. because so many of them, just because of the nature of the programs we offer, the fact that 
kids are not enrolled by parents. Often they just come right in off the street themselves into our programs. And they have often very high risks in their lives. They tend to skew older and more boys than girls. And so often the young men uh, and young ladies who come already have a lot of issues, not only in their family lives, but in their personal lives. Mm. They may already be engaged in substance abuse or have some criminal uh, experience in their past already that's hindering them or be truant from school. So they're at very high risk. And sometimes when we would try to mentor an adult with a young person and then expect that they would connect uh, each week or a couple times a, a month on their own in the community, that just was very difficult to, to make happen. Mm -hmm. Despite the perseverance of the volunteer and the desire of the child, there's just was so much chaos sometimes in their life that it didn't happen. And so we've learned that there are a lot of ways that you can mentor. Okay. And so we do mentoring in such a variety of ways now. Our staff mentor young people. We have group mentoring that occurs after a discussion in a program, then there will be a small group where an adult can mentor a group of young people mm -hmm. on site. There is peer mentoring going on, especially with some of the high school students and the younger students. Um, there is uh, mentoring in a program we call All Stars, where the young person simply has to find one positive adult, either in their extended family or will provide one, mm -hmm. and have a meaningful conversation about some issues one hour a week. Ah. So we do mentoring in a variety of innovative ways to make it work for these young people. Yes, and a world of difference it can make yes, uh, in just yes. giving a young person, uh, like I said in the very beginning, uh, just giving them that sense of knowing that there's somebody who cares and they yes. can pick up the phone and call them. Uh, if they need them. That's that's right. And you know, there have been studies by the CDC and others just looking at these issues. And one CDC study really captivated me. It it talked about ACEs, mm -hmm. adverse childhood experiences, call them ACEs, and that when a child has a cluster of those in their life, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to even be or overt child abuse or neglect, something like that. It can be simply the effects of poverty. It could be uh, the, the absence or the illness of a parent, mm -hmm. just all kinds of things that can create an adverse experience for the child, that their life trajectory will most likely be very negative unless a positive adult intervenes in some way to let them know they're cared about and that their life can be better and can be different. And so wow. that's so important. And you do believe that there is a growing isolation of young people in urban communities yes. with an increasing number of single parent families. So yes. a lot of times you've got that parent who's at work and they may be working two jobs in order to make ends meet and you've exactly. got this teenager maybe or a young person who's kind of wandering around when they're supposed to be home maybe and getting into things that are not always uh, the best things for them. So mm -hmm. to have a community center like yours right there in the neighborhood definitely makes a difference I'm sure. Yes it does. I mean the most dangerous hours for a child is between three and seven and that's mm -hmm. for the very reason that you specified Andrea that parents are doing the best they can mm -hmm. and it's hard enough to raise teenagers in the best of circumstances yeah. but they may not be home and uh, so the young person doesn't have a parent at home they're in a potentially a more risky or dangerous neighborhood and it's just very hard for them they often can become either victims or perpetrators of some kind of crime just because they get caught up in things yeah wrong place wrong time wrong and do place, it every time. time yeah that's mm -hmm. right and uh, you have a resource center that serves many purposes mm -hmm. so uh, if you could tell us a little bit more about that as well sure you know sometimes as we're working with young people and we see they're having a bad day mm -hmm. um, it, rather than ask why are you doing this <laughs> you know we we ask them, what's going on, mm -hmm. you know? Not trying to address the behavior, but what's behind that behavior? And I remember a time when a, a young lady was just struggling and not doing well at all in, in the program that day, just creating difficulties. And we pulled her aside, and I was the one who had a chance to talk to her that day. And it turned out that she was struggling because she was so concerned about her mother, who was crying all the time. And I asked her, why is your mother crying? She said, well, we don't have any, feet, any heat and the bathtub isn't working mm. and 
it's very hard for us to get to school. And so we know that, that a young person uh, will struggle if there are family issues that aren't addressed. Yes, the and stress of a parent, exactly. if they see their family exactly. stress, then right. it trickles down. So we were able to help with a heat repair. Often wow. we bring food to families. You know, it can be very powerful, Andrea, just to do a home visit. And we do home visits with kids all the time, just to see the circumstances, because that helps you understand better than anything else why, why a young person is struggling in some areas. It's because of something um, that's hard at home. Yeah, so uh, with that resource center you help in the ways yes. that you just mentioned yes. as well as providing practical items for yes. homes, uh, yes. incentive to participate in educational programs yes. and allow City on a Hill to meet the needs of families in crisis. I think it's all great stuff you're doing. Thank Before you. we run out of time I do yeah. want to uh, mention this book entitled Beautiful Things City on a Hill and this is where you uh, primarily uh, showcase some of your success stories of young people who have come through your uh, community center and uh, it gives people a chance to really see the work that you're doing. Yes, it does. And of course the arts are a powerful way for young people yeah. to express their their feelings, their ideas, their aspirations, mm -hmm. their, their pain. And uh, so our young people have developed videos and shared them with hundreds of their peers and they developed this book uh, awesome. that tells their stories and showcases a little of their art or poetry and it's available for sale if anyone was interested. Okay, so they sure. can get that information on your website? Yes, they can. Okay, and your website address is? It is long, <laughs> www.cityonahillmilwaukee.org. Okay, and uh, whenever we have great conversations, the time flies by, so I do wanna make sure we emphasize the fact that you have some special events coming up yes. and you do need volunteers to not only help with that but other things that you have going on as well. Yes, we do. There are opportunities to be involved in young, with young people at our youth center and some of our other activities. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we also meet the needs of adults in our neighborhood. I guess Frederick Douglass said it best, it's easier to build strong children than to fix broken men. Mm. But there's a lot of brokenness in the adults in our neighborhood and so we have a health outreach and a food pantry and all kinds of other ways that we help in our immediate neighborhood. Uh, and volunteers can get involved the second Saturday of every month for 15 years we have done a health outreach and they can get involved whether they have clinical skills or just know how to pour coffee or, <laughs> or greet someone when they walk in the door. Good stuff. I like it all and I do want to mention a couple other things. You do have your uh, facility that focuses on health so yes. if someone has anything from uh, maybe needing some health screenings or uh, glasses that need repair. Absolutely. You offer that as well. Yes, we do. Yes, I we love do. it. You have the Pulse Youth Ministry, your Milwaukee Mission Trips, and Adopt a Block. Uh, a lot of great things that you're doing, and we have just under a minute, if you would, tell us just a little bit about uh, the importance of these things that you offer. All right, I can probably sum that up by saying that we recognized early on that the need for transformation is mutual. Mm -hmm. So it is not just the community that volunteers or staff are serving that needs transformation, but those of us who are there doing the serving need our, our hearts and lives transformed as well. And so we do a lot of training programs on poverty and justice issues to help people understand better matter what it is to struggle in poverty, what it takes to get out and how those of us who have more resources can make a difference and help be a part of that transformation. And it requires that we change. We change our attitudes, we change our behaviors, we get involved. All right, great way to end the show. Thank you so much for coming by. It has been a pleasure. Yes, well. And Diane De La Santos is the executive director of City on a Hill. They're doing outstanding things there. And if you like more information on anything that we've discussed, you can call 414-931-6670 or log on to cityonahillmilwaukee.org. And that's gonna do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. As always, thank you for watching. And I hope you join us again next week as we take another look at Our Issues Milwaukee. Have a great day.